Happy 4th of July to all my fellow Americans and to all my Australian fans. Good eye, mate. Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile here with another edition of WNBA Weekly. Here's what's happened last week in the association. On Tuesday, you had Tulsa at Connecticut. Vakuna Williams threw up 23 points, but four Connecticut starters had at least 14 points, including Tina Charles, who had a huge double-double as the Sun ended their losing streak, winning 88-69. And then you had Seattle at Chicago, where Sylvia Fowles C sat out with an ankle injury, and Ed went head-to-head -head with Tina Thompson. Both had double-doubles, but in the end, Seattle's defense prevailed and Chicago suffered their first home loss of the season as the Storm won 69-60. Then you have New York at Phoenix. Penny Taylor returned to action and added 5 points and 4 assists. New York moved the ball well as 5 players scored in double figures and only one player didn't have any assists. But Tarasi had a double-double with 16 points, 10 assists, and Griner, Bonner, and Dupree combined for 58 points as the Mercury extended their winning streak. And you had Minnesota at Los Angeles. Uh, Candice Parker had a huge game, and the entire Sparks roster played well as they shut down Maya Moore and dominated from start to finish, winning 96 to 66. Then on Thursday, you had New York at Los Angeles. Cappy Pondexter had 34 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 steals, while rookie Kelsey Bone had a career high 20 points. But Los Angeles was in control from start to finish and behind 29 points from Christy Tolliver and 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists from Candace Parker. Los Angeles wins 97 to 89. So after last week's actions, here are the current WNBA standings. Also, I came across an interesting article. Uh, early results are in for the All-Star voting. I'll put a link to the article in the description in case you haven't read it yet. The only thing I'm going to say is that Elena Deladon is currently the leading vote getter. Now, on to the weekend. There are five games being played on Saturday and Sunday, including a doubleheader on Saturday being broadcast nationally, so you should definitely check those out if you get the chance. We start on Saturday where we've got San Antonio at Los Angeles. The doubleheader kicks off with the Silver Stars heading into Los Angeles hoping to end the Sparks winning streak and begin a winning streak of their own. This game airs on NBA TV at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And my preview is that these teams seem to be on opposite ends of the spectrum right now. So the obvious choice is definitely Los Angeles. And I'm not one to take unnecessary risk. I don't see too many reasons why the Silver Stars would be able to beat them. Next, we've got Seattle at Washington. Both of these teams are 5-6 and six at the bottom of the playoff picture and coming off a win, look, looking to keep momentum going and get back to 500. This game begins at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My preview is that, unfortunately, unless one of these is your favorite team, it's going to be hard for me to find a reason to convince you to watch this. But hey, that doesn't mean you shouldn't watch it if you get the chance. I'm just saying I can't think of too many things that really get me interested in seeing this. Especially since the next game on the schedule is Connecticut at Indiana. The two teams at the bottom of the Eastern Conference looking to get back into the playoff picture. And this game will air on NBA TV at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, my preview is that Tamika looks better than ever and the Fever look like they're playing back up to their usual standards. The Sun did end their losing streak, but they beat Tulsa, just like every other team in the league. So, then on Sunday, you've got two intriguing matchups. The first one is Chicago at New York. Cappy Pondexter leads the Liberty into Chicago to, to face the rookie sensation Elena Deladon and the Sky. This game begins at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My preview is that both of these teams are trying to get back on track after losses. Chicago looked like a much different team playing without the league's leading rebounder, Sylvia Fowles. You know, she missed the last game with an ankle injury. The last report I read said that she's just listed as day-to-day, -day, so I have no idea when she'll return. I don't trust New York because they play too inconsistently, but they are looking better. And right now, there are just so many unknowns in Chicago for me. And then next, you have Phoenix at Minnesota. The battle for first place as the two top teams in the Western Conference fight for supremacy. This game begins at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in my 
my preview is that if unless this is your first time seeing the show, then you should know I'm very high on the Mercury this season, and I think they match up well against the Lynx. They are more than capable of winning this. Then again, if Maya Moore goes beast mode, all bets are off. So this is one of those games where you just watch and enjoy. Well, that's it for this week. Tune in on Monday for another all-new edition of WNBA Weekly. And until then, I'm your host, Nathan Lau. This has been The Fan Perspective. Um, I, for the Americans, I hope you enjoyed the holiday. For any fans elsewhere in the world, uh, I hope you enjoyed this Thursday. I hope it was a good Thursday for you. It was good for me. I got a lot of food. Did you get a lot of food? I hope you are eating well.